Go ahead. We'll call me. Uh, welcome everyone. We'll do a short amount of business that we'll get into that. Visitors. Into business. Into mm -hmm. business. So, I would entertain a motion for the uh, minutes of June, I can read it, 18th, and the special minutes of June 21st. We can do both of those. I will move the, the uh, adoption of the minutes of June 18th. Okay. I'll second. You don't like the 21st? One at a time. We got all night. Any further discussion regarding those? Hearing none, may we get a vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now intend a motion to approve the minutes of June 21st as amended. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion regarding the amended minutes of June 21st? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Now I understand a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $39,050.50. General fund contribution 52-23-20, fire fund 21-261-14, cemeteries 230-28, EMS billing 39-32-55, road bridge 84 and 3 and 4, and zero on capital projects. Uh, I so move. Discussion regarding those payments. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Emily, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank Before you. Before she talks, why do we always have an emergency call in the middle of a meeting? It's just timing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call it an emergency call. I'm sorry. That's what we're here for. It's not pretty. Okay. Well, I'm, I think I know everybody here. So I'm Emily with mm -hmm. Yellow Springs Hell Bank. And I'm here with Brittany, uh, also of Yellow Springs Home Inc. And then Wes Young, who uh, is here to represent our development partner, St. Mary Development Corporation. And as you may or may not know, we were able to move forward with purchasing the uh, 1.8 acres adjacent to the site of your new fire station, uh, proposed new fire station building. And so we wanted to come and talk to you to introduce ourselves to also, um, and to introduce our project and to uh, just kind of set this stage for maybe some collaboration on um, infrastructure, common areas, uh, that kind of thing, and to ask for your support as we go through our zoning process. So um, with that, I will hand it over to um, Wes. Okay, cool. First of all, Dr. Pat, so mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, I don't know how much you know about St. Mary, we've been around since 1989, we're paid based not for profit, you know, kind of thing. and uh, we do you know, two types of development, we co-develop with folks, and we do our own sole development. Worked a lot with Miller Valentine over the years and, and a lot of different, uh, a lot of different groups, but uh, <laughs> really that. And um, so, as Emily said, I, one of the things that we immediately thought of is, is there, is there some way we, you know, kind of a win-win, you know, some way that we can work with you and make sense for you guys and possibly make sense for us, you know, if we can, you know, trying to be a good neighbor, whatever we do, and. Uh, Things like detention, and, and, and I am not a site engineer, so I'm not going to get into a lot of, a lot of technicalities there. Okay, well, before you get too far into it, I, I just do want to remind you, and, and I thought it was fairly evident, recently anyway, we're discussed with Emily, this project is 100% complete. There, is, there are no changes to be made. Uh, in any of the okay. any of the grading, any yeah, of the infrastructure, in hours, hour. yeah, sure. okay, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, if there's yeah. no, no, I anything you know outside of that, that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay. Well, um, that being said, so what we uh, what we as, as Emily indicated, we you know we'd like your uh, your feedback on uh, 
you know, the, the building that we're contemplating is uh, the site and the size can only accommodate senior. His family would be three, three or four bedrooms mm -hmm. in addition to the one or two bedrooms that you have in the mix. So what we're um, anticipating is about, about 54 or 55 units is about what we can get on the site. Mm -hmm. And there's two options there. We can either do a three-story building, which is more of a, would be more of an L-shaped type building, or a possible four-story building that would not be entirely four stories. It would be like a step down where you have some units concentrated in the middle. Too. Mm -hmm. And the reason the tax credits are <coughs> really competitive, <laughs> and uh, one is the, the amount of dollars that is available through tax credits, you can just about to get 54, 55 units. Uh, also, you, you need that many so that you can drive your unit costs down because that's how you get graded. That's how you get rated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, the, the four stories would, probably, would potentially give us an opportunity for more green space, three stories, a little bit less. Although the site is you know, relatively small uh, mm -hmm. by, all, by all counts. So uh, we, you know, we're certainly open to um, you know, different uh, design cues on the, on the building, you know, colors. Uh, you know, uh, we do a, you know, we build a quality building. You know, we're we're going to be in it. At the way this partnership is structured is. YSH will be the sponsor. What that means is after 15 years of tax credit compliance, they would have an option to purchase the building. Mm -hmm. They may purchase it with us, and you know, we may just recast things in maybe a slightly different way. Uh, but either way, one or both of us will be involved in this for a, a very long time. You know, that's what we that's what we do. We don't mm -hmm. want to convert this to market rate after 15 years or anything like that. We want it to be affordable and serve our seniors, which is you know, our mission. So uh, you know, we build, you know, we can at times put a you know, 50 year shingles on the building, like for example, we want to build a quality product. And a lot of times, unless you know it's affordable, you really can't tell. You really can't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can tell if you're really in, you know, if you're really here in this world and mm -hmm. versus the market rate world where the units are going to be slightly smaller, certainly big enough, but that's about the only real, mm -hmm. uh, really, uh, design feature that you can really tell. So, uh, you know, that's the, basically, you know, we, uh, you know, we're talking to various uh, planning commission members and various community members, neighbors, and so forth, and uh, we want to include you guys to, to get your feedback and see what you think. And at this point, we haven't settled on a design direction. Right. That's why they it. <laughs> so um, we're conducting a series of listening sessions with stakeholders mm -hmm. um, so that we can get input on our design direction. But mm -hmm. we are conducting those meetings um, just over the next probably couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we've been doing them for a while, so we're going to be wrapping up pretty soon. So we would really love your input on the height, on the... Um, uh, you know, three stories versus four stories. We would also really like your input on outside amenities that could perhaps enhance your project as well. We're really interested in collaborating however we can, understanding that, you know, some of your, most of your decisions on the design and all of that, we've already paid for the civil engineering and all of that right. stuff. Um, and then I guess I, I would just be curious to know if, if there's, you know, I mean, if, if we shoulder the, the expense of looking at something like sharing in the detention area, is that just a closed, done deal, or, or would it be something that we could explore? It's, it's, assuming that, you know, that that's what a, 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 an option that we were looking at, the problem is, as I see it, from my little understanding of all, all the work that we've done, it would extend the project, the timeline. I mean, you'd have to go back to the, somewhat to the drawing boards. You know, it'd have to be, you know, it would have to be re-engineered, it would have to be redesigned, it then would have to be recosted, and it would have to be re-permitted at, at multiple levels. We have to have permits mm -hmm. from, from Yellow Springs, we have to have permits from Green County, we have to have permits from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, who's our financial arm in this, and they all require permitting. Um, so maybe we'll So you might be looking at an additional six months, you know, for mm -hmm. before we could go out to bid to to move a detention basin from one side of the project to the other. Well, and we don't want to look at another six months. 
No, no that's fair. I mean, yeah, we, no, we, no, I don't we're think we're just trying to explore different. There, but, 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 yeah. but there might right. be something like that mm -hmm. in the future after we're already locked in. Mm -hmm. so could but we it. don't want to risk any of our. Well, we, we understand that time time is of the essence with um, with building and building costs going up mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. We're under the same yeah. thing. So we wouldn't be asking you to slow your project down at all. Just we, we would love to be great but partners to you. I would say having, I've, I've worked, I've done, I've worked on houses on Herman Street and mm -hmm. that that is a shunt, a drainage shunt. It can be horrible. And we, regardless of, I mean, after construction, it's still going to be an issue. Drainage. Uh, you mean from from our site to your site? Just down Herman Street. I don't know if you remember three, mm -hmm. four, five years ago. There was, and it was a case of a woman whose car was, you know, became a flooded car just because it was parked in her driveway on mm -hmm. Herman Street. Uh, okay. I don't remember the, which year it was. It was 2012, 2013. It was, it was pretty bizarre. Uh, mm -hmm. And our construction and any additional construction, although we don't want it to exaggerate that or increase that, it's likely to. I mean, the, de de the detention uh, planning is supposed to neutralize any increase. <coughs> Well, I think in, that in uh, quick runoff, but the civil engineering firm that you used is also one that St. Mary uses regularly, isn't mm -hmm. that right? And they do very good work. So, um, so how do you feel about three versus four stories? Um, if we had four stories, we would be able to have more green space um, and probably more of a buffer to the residential neighbors, which wouldn't be impact your side. Um, but then three stories would have less green space. Well, I personally favor the, the four because I like the idea of more green space. I think that uh, it would be easier to sell as an idea uh, mm -hmm. in this community. I don't feel qualified to, to make a, an opinion. Uh, you know, the, from the experience that we've had of putting this project together, there are just so many zillion variables that, that go into those sorts of decisions. Just sitting here and going three floors, or four floors. Well, you know, I just think that's irresponsible. For me. I mean, I'm I'm kind of you know, most original people, so you know, we we may very well look at two options and maybe show you what. What they look like. Uh -huh. I mean, now I know that it's kind of hard. It didn't want to hit you cold, so I, but just generally, <coughs> you have a strong. The presence. height is will be a variance uh, for for four. So, um, what about uh, your opinion? I mean, I think either one is fine. I mean, three or four stories, mm -hmm. senior housing, that many apartments, it's going to be sprinkler. I'm assuming. Right. Um, probably standpipe systems for us. So. Yeah, we're you know, short of with the fire yeah. department. It's sort of an experience. It's like a better version of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I mean, you know, get your. I mean, yeah, there's features certainly, you know, size the elevators to make it easier for us to get in and out. But either way, I, mean, I like tall things. Good. <laughs> I mean, we. Great. <laughs> as an expert opinion, write that down. We need more of things. concern about a neighboring development. Uh, being concerned about noise or, or, or whatever, but it's too late. We're already set. <laughs> uh, I think, that just as an aside, I think there is a demographic that would love fourth story. The penthouse view. Place <laughs> in Yellow Springs. I think that that would be an appeal. We have to tell you a quick story. We had a building we sold recently that was called Right Place over in Zenith. And it, it was 92 units, and it, it, you know, the top floor, uh, you know, we 
plant a, or we, uh, we plant a pretty good sized tree, or we maintain the trees before I started the same year. But anyway, the tree was very big. And so we set up this questionnaire. And uh, the rest of the question is, well, I only have one complaint. I'd like for you to tear the tree, or cut the tree down. Well, it's not weird. She has to ask me, well, why? So I can't see my neighbor and what they're doing over there. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> We're not going to cut a tree down so that you can snoop on your neighbor. That's Sorry. hilarious. <laughs> um, so. Are there are there common uh, outdoor space amenities that like either you were hoping to do with your project and can't, or that you think would be really attractive to have right next door to you that you think would be uh, a, you know kind of a win win? I don't recall it ever coming up. Ever. I mean, the only outdoor amenity that is in the plan is a, is a small patio attached to the building for, mm -hmm. the, uh, for the crews to be able to come outside and, and eat and perhaps uh, grill something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, other than that... Um, there was the fountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was. Did <laughs> <laughs> a firefighter hold the house? Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> that actually was plan B. Of course. Uh, there's our art project. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some of the things that we, we tend to do with, uh, with, with independent living seniors is we, so everybody can participate, we tend to have uh, accessible gardens, you know, for, uh, you know, raw vegetables and fresh fruit and fresh food. And uh, might have like a play area for grandchildren when they visit, you know, things like that. Some very low impact stuff, not gaudy or anything. That, but it's you know, just kind of basic. But that, that tends to be kind of popular. Well, building a little little baby observation deck so they can come up and see the, the fire <laughs> trucks and the right. going in and out. Well, they probably want to come over and visit. I'm oh, yeah. sure <laughs> the kids would. Right. Actually, well, a three or four story building would make a nice <laughs> buffer to the neighborhood for the noise. Mm -hmm. so. And all that light pollution. <laughs> yeah, and we're, uh, as I understand, your uh, number of calls you know, here is relative, relatively small. Per day, right? Three and a half per day. Okay. And depending on who you're comparing to. Well, it's enough to be interesting, but not enough to have constant <laughs> yeah. alarms going off. Well, right. right. As you guys are. Most of them don't have alarms. Yeah, that's right. what I understand. We, you know, we take, you know, we have money, you know, attached to us, but we also have uh, home funds to the government through HUD. And when you do that, they monitor various uh, sources of noise. And they may even literally require us to do a noise study because we're next to a fire station. But they will find that you know we will easily pass if that's what the volume is. Mm -hmm. But we still may have to do it. Mm -hmm. So. So, do you have any questions, hopes, concerns, ideas, <laughs> anything you would like to share or ask us before we focus on a uh, design direction? Uh, just. You know, wish you best of luck with it. Yeah. Look forward to many years in the neighborhood. I think it's at uh, least you know, with your project and hopefully we can get our project going. I think it's a it's an awesome location. Um, it certainly will be be staring at a vacant lot of you know, concrete mm -hmm. for a floor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of times we you know, we had going back to our senior project, we had a real strong opposition to that. It's a beautiful building. But once it was built, like, oh, I wish that would have been built you know, five years ago. So that's, so that was a South South Zinia? It's off 42. The right cycle was the ordinary yeah, right cycle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's, nice. there's so 78 affordable units and 14 oh. market rate units in that, in that building. I, I'm imagining that, that <laughs> separate from the specifications of development, stuff might happen, but you can't write it in. Oh, you mean collaboration? Yeah. Stuff? Yeah, I, so that was a, the next question I had is if, if we want to reach out to someone with an idea, who should be our contact person? Probably me. Okay. Right. I wanted to also just just so you guys know what possible time frame 
mm -hmm. this might take place. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be interesting. And yep. I'll probably get it now. But so the this is of course the long process. You all know how that development is. Oh yeah. You, you don't <laughs> see anybody behind you going. Well, I can't wait to do what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, um, so this we're getting ready for a February 2019 application, mm -hmm. and then the state takes until the middle of May. Mm -hmm. To approve it, if you if you're approved, and there's a one in three chance. There's last year there's about 79 applications, 26 approvals. And, and just to inter interrupt you yeah. for a minute, um, it costs when you factor in particularly staff times, you know, forty thousand dollars or more just to apply. Well, they know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they kept track of their hours. <laughs> you're right, <laughs> but. Uh, so then the next, then, then there's a final application phase, but we would most likely close on the construction uh, to start construction in the first quarter of 2020, and then let's say at the end of the first quarter. So about 14 months later would be the, the building would be completed. Hmm. It might be completed a little quicker, you know, depending on you know it, the reason we, we like to start in spring. So, mm -hmm. so we we try to start. January 2nd one year, and we just sat there for 60 days. It's like, why we so hard to get, get this thing closed, it didn't make any difference. So, so about the middle of 2020 would be about when it would, when it would open. And, uh, if, and, and again, if, that, if the first time through we don't get awarded, then we take a second crack at it and just move everything yeah. back a year. So. Well, the, the only one last thing that I wanted to relay is, and, and I, I may have said this before, but I just want to let you know that in our location, we've got about $100,000, looking at about $100,000 charge for soil remediation mm -hmm. in a very small section mm -hmm. of where the old foundation and where the old clinic was. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if that it, it, you know, interfaces with anything you're doing, but... I did. I you appreciate you sharing the that. soil study, and I did pass it along, and we, looked, we okay. talked about All it. Right, good. Our good. Team. So was this a contamination or was this a soft soil? It's just soft soil because they just basically pushed the foundation or, yeah. you know, into the ground and, and didn't come back yeah. or anything. So. And but you had to use the to mm -hmm. correct it. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got to take a bunch of it out yeah. and recompact it. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both mm -hmm. soil and here. Mm -hmm. Our development at uh, Carriage Trails were, uh, at Huber Heights were just finishing up. It's a, it's a cottage product, 46 units. And, uh, in phase one, they took all of the topsoil and pushed it to phase two. Mm -hmm. it took 1,500 loads of dirt out. Wow. That's <laughs> but uh, we're hoping to win. Yeah. But <laughs> the, the, the overall developer who happened to be our partner, he's, they're still developing on other sites that, that need dirt. So we didn't, we didn't take it out, but we only take it about a mile and a half, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That puts a word out or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> the shit's proper. Well, thank you for stopping in. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, I had just one more request before we go, which is we would really love um, once our plans come together and we're going through the public zoning process, we would love to be able to, um, you know, have the support of the trustees, uh, whether that's a, a letter or some sort of declaration of support. I don't, I don't know what it would look like, but um, anything would be anything like that would um, certainly, of course, help us. To, to show that we've talked with you as yeah. project members. Well, at that point, I'm sure that you'll have some basic design, you know, yes. roughed out, you know, okay. and, and a basic site plan of it. And if you just, you know, send a copy for us to look at, we'd be, you know, I'm sure happy to, to as a board, uh, you know, if make you a see something on there that Great. for some reason, I mean, I, I'm not an architect, so, um, but, you know, if it, if it looks like there's something that doesn't quite fit with what, you know what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. with, with your development. I mean, there's there's obviously some different options, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So you know, we're sensitive to that. Yeah. Okay. We don't sure. want. To. But, and, and but is your is the endorsement you're asking for in the broader concept or specific to the plan you present? But both. But because we could do the broader concept well, now. Yes, of course. But we would. not. Right, sure. exactly. endorsing a specific plan. Yes, we would love both of those things. 
But I think in fairness, so we would I think wait it's better to get when, when there's the plan. Okay. We do have some des design renderings and things like that in front of you, then we should that's when we'll ask. Yeah. And you were asking for ours, and now you've got ours, right? You have our plan. Yes. Yes, we have, right yes, we have the plan. That's, thank you. Thank you. Good bedtime reading. I was going to say late night reading <laughs> with my magnifying glass. Yeah, well, last, our our next 10 will, weeks. Our be architect reading. will have that in very short order because <laughs> he, can, you know, he can understand where you guys are and you know, yes. react accordingly. And I think we're going to probably look at working with the same landscaping company or at least to, you know, having some sort well, of coordinated friends, approach. Well, the friends used, I guess. That you, I think they used the same. Did you? Well, that's right. That's right. Roger, Roger. Hopefully, we'd be. That's an issue that I'm going to be bringing up. So no. No. Okay. <laughs> well, we will. Whatever happens, we would like to be a if good. If you have a landscape where you would recommend, we'll listen. <laughs> yeah, we want to coordinate like the to project to planning to the extent possible to lift yeah. up the neighborhood and both for projects. Those are goals. Cool, so. That would be great. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. At least not landscaping. Give their sense to the neighbors and buffering and things like that. So try to get a good win all the way. I'm, I'm like burning with curiosity about what you're doing up now with the landscaping. But. I like clover in my grass. Okay. Got it. <laughs> No straight no, rescue around here. That's, that's just the beginning of my statement. Okay. <coughs> Be pro pollinators. <laughs> okay, well, thank you once again. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, just All right, we will continue then. Um, next item is correspondence of period. Uh, meeting notification for the Economic Sustainability Commission, and I think we'll get into that a little further at the last uh, meeting. We talked about the CIC project, and I think both Mark and Don have some input on that. We'll get to. Um, we had a request from uh, Yellow Springs News to update the guide to Yellow Springs, and I have done that and added Don to the, uh, the board uh, list. Uh, uh, let's see, we have some email regarding Stony Creek Garden Center, and we're going to put that aside till zoning, because Richard's going to be a um, big help in that question. Uh, uh, some requests from Home Inc. about this evening's meeting, so that's already passed. Um, uh, some information from um, Community Solutions about uh, what's going on with the Prairie coming up. Uh, oh, some more Community Solutions news of Solomon Gamboa and the Soil Solution. Coming up. Uh, note from Ken LeBlanc about the uh, census update that we participated in and uh, thanks to everyone for their participation. It ended up being completed on time and under budget. Uh, some information about the Basque Regional Planning Executive Committee meeting. Um, Has the retirement party happened yet? The retirement party will be on uh, the uh, 6th of nice. 6th of this July. This coming Friday. Uh, 2, to, 2 to 4 in the afternoon at, that, the, at the Regional Planning Office. There's a long-standing director. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long. It was only long. three years. Somewhat. <laughs> anyway, current. Current director. Retiring uh, an, informa an information packet from the aforementioned uh, current director LeBlanc about the Yellow Springs Clifton Bike Connector project. Um, note from Ashley Kelly to me about uh, general obligation bond, which we will get into forthwith. More information about that. More information about that. <laughs> A statement from David Yost, a statement, a new statement available. We owe them uh, $758.50. Not anymore. Not anymore. Check the email uh, <laughs> An email from Mark to uh, Luke McCoy about his uh, uh, Freedom, of, uh, Freedom of Information Act request that she has fulfilled. Wait, can we back up two, two steps? Sure. 
the auditor. We pay the auditor for the audit. We've answered this time. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make a statement again okay. that we pay for the state auditor to audit us. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and then what about this public information request? Um, a gentleman um, who in uh, in conjunction with open the books, it's a you know it's a public records request basically was made actually back in probably April or March. And, and it was um, a broad sweep thing, or it was specific about what? Uh, employees, all, all employees, um, hire dates and salary base salary pay and overtimes and. Um, Departments. Uh, I just, that they I were just in. want to know what it was. Yeah. Okay. Anything yeah. else for me at this moment? Nope. Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Good. Uh, the the next to the last thing is a, uh, a reminder from MVRPC about the uh, governor's uh, forum coming up next week that Don and I will be attending. Uh, one last piece of correspondence from me anyway. That came in late was a note, not a note, an email opinion, I should say, an official opinion from attorney, um, prosecuting attorney DeWine regarding what we're going to talk about in, under zoning. So we'll bring that up. Anybody else have any additional correspondence? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll move to the fire department. And the official fire department report for the evening which must still be on my desk. You must have missed it. I think I did. Mm -hmm. Turn on that new clear paper. With invisible ink. With invisible ink, yes. Mm -hmm. But since the last day of the board, we've had 30 EMS calls, seven fire incidents, and uh, conducted five fire safety inspections. Uh, Someone told me there was a fire. There was. Mm -hmm. There was, in fact, a fire. Um, Everything's kind of bleed together now. But uh, about two weeks ago, well, the, between the last two, this maybe the last one, um, we had a fire on Golden Willow Court. Um, <coughs> fire, we were dispatched, uh, it was probably about 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, I was working, and Jason and Helene were working. We were at Green Memorial Hospital, of course, dropping off a patient. Mm -hmm. and the call came in uh, through uh, the mutual aid system that we utilize in Green County. Our units were dispatched along with Houston, Zinga uh, Township, and Cedarville. So we had two people respond to the station, uh, Bob and Joe, and they brought the engine, and Jason and I met them on the scene. Uh, we arrived just as Zinga Township was pointing out. So, so how does that work? The mutual aid? Um, the dispatcher is when they enter the address and the type of call. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the computer system, the dispatch system, pulls for a pre-designated list. Mm -hmm. So based on the location of the township, it will pull, it's typically, I mean, it's still the same three people, between the township, two people, and Houston. Mm -hmm. um, Fairborn doesn't really participate much in that because they're Fairborn. Um, and <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I, I guess they're too busy to play for the rest of us. But, um, and it depends on the type of call. I and mean, we pre-designated if there's a fire, county-wide if there's a fire, you get, you know, X amount of this resource, X amount of this resource. Um, so for there, we would we had four engines dispatched. We only have two ourselves. So then, the computer pulls two additional engines. Um, so it's Houston and Cedarville, I believe. Um, and then uh, it pulled tankers, which we're we're getting that fixed because there's you know, need tankers on Golden Right. Fire, so, so the first uh, we were there, the, the fire had started when it turns out. Motor and a bathroom fan seized up and overheated and caused the fire. Uh, a short circuit arc that spread into um, blown in cellulose insulation in the attic, which is the devil's vein, basically. Mm -hmm. And it, I thought such insulation was boric acid treated and would not be. One of the great enemies uh, of the fire service and firefighting in general is the building industry. And one of the great lies that they tell everybody, which I'll probably get sued for saying this, but um, when that stuff is blown into your space, your attic typically, you know, you've got about that much in there, 
and then to fire treat it, they spray a treatment on top. So the top doesn't burn, so the, but everything underneath it does. I, I was taught, and I think this is not trivial to say, I was taught that the, you, you, you would, that all of it was treated with boric acid. Yeah, for example, when you used to blow it into the walls, mm -hmm. you couldn't treat it afterwards. You were told right. that it was already treated. And, 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 and they, they could test it by lighting it. Well, I've been on numerous fires where that's, <laughs> that's not the case. Okay. Um, it, uh, it doesn't burn extremely rapidly. It burns slowly. But uh, mm -hmm. as the fire investigator uh, used in this is a great analogy, blown insulation is like, cellulose insulation is like, Cancer. You got it. When you got it here, you stop it there. It pops up over there, and you don't know it. Um, what happened in this situation is crews went in. The fire was already knocked down pretty much. The owner was home, thank goodness. Hit it with an extinguisher. Um, they pulled the ceiling. They pulled insulation out. They checked the area. The thermal imaging cameras. Everything was fine. We went home. Uh, we were called back at 1:56 in the morning, um, where unfortunately the fire had rekindled. So this is the second fire in a month that rekindled. Correct. Yeah. And one of the things that I told Channel 7, because everyone turns on their television and watches things like Chicago Fire, um, <laughs> fires don't go out just like that. It would be nice if they did. <laughs> but uh, firefighting is not exact science, so, um, you know, it should be, but it's not. So, you know, the crews can check for hot spots with a thermal imaging camera, but the problem is if you're checking for hot spots in insulation, insulation knows what it's supposed to, insulates it, and then you can't find it. Short of going through every inch, destroying their ceilings, which we don't want to do typically. So the introduction of additional ventilated air into the space, the attic space, seems to have reignited the fire. So when crews arrived, luckily the homeowner, uh, the husband had not gone to sleep at all that night. He had just checked the space five minutes prior, he said. There was nothing there. And then five minutes later, there was fire coming out. Um, so we were all dispatched back again. Uh, crews did a very good job with a quick knockdown on the exterior of the fire. Um, went back in, thoroughly overhauled it. We contacted a board up company to assist the family. Um, and left about 4.30 in the morning. So we had, uh, again, it was us, Cedarville, and Zia Township. So the end result, by our estimate, was about sixty thousand dollars in damage. Um, the fire investigator let me know that uh, the insurance company is going to pay the claim. So they were, uh, the homeowners were very happy about that, obviously. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the status is. I know they have several bids in for contractors to do the work. Um, so I'm not sure who, you know, who's got that contract. I assume hopefully someone did. So. <laughs> Colin, I, I understand completely that you wouldn't want to soak all the insulation in the whole attic because that would do a lot of damage to the yeah. building. Could, if the fire department thought that there were enough of this kind of fires, vacuum it out? <laughs> I mean, we joked about that. We'd have to get the village to come out with their sewer vacuum truck mm -hmm. into the township if they would do that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's designed, I mean, I, it can suck dirt out, so I assume it can suck out wet newspaper. Maybe you know, if you just suck it out and pile it in the yard or something, it's, you've, you've prevented yeah. that possibility. I mean, right, I mean, and we balance, you know, one of the things we have to do is balance property damage, you know, mm -hmm. with realistic, you know. That's what I'm saying, like, whether it's realistic yeah. or not. Homeowners don't like us to destroy more than we have to. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. um, and, you know, it's a judgment call that, you know, we took out as much as we thought we, we had. We found <coughs> what was burned. We thought that was good. Um, unfortunately, additional airflow um, helps to fan the fire. And, sure. and, oh, and this homeowner kept an eye on it, so. Yeah, and we're very lucky that he was you know, he was awake. It, interestingly, the, the smoke detector is in the home because they had working smoke detectors. We were there for the, the actual rekindle probably 30 minutes when they finally went off. Uh -huh. wow. So the guys are like, oh, smoke detector's going off. <laughs> um, and primarily because the fire was up above the oh, level. Yeah, the smoke doesn't you know, go down. Exactly. So it was, uh, it was just interesting that you're there and all of a sudden you're like, what's that sound? Oh, it's a smoke detector. So. Yeah. Um, so that worked out. Yeah, that was interesting. So, um, But I mean, on the good side, the insurance company is paying their claim, and, and that's good. So, 
obviously. That's true. And the fire investigator has found no, you know, they, they found a cause, they found no fault in our operations, which was always good. Um, and uh, some of the residents were not good, but you know, it's unfortunately the way things go. I mean, the response times weren't great for the first one because we were coming from Xenia. Um, and there was a delay because we had to drop in. You know, had to get our patient off the cot onto the hospital. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> pull them off. Typically, the hospital is like that. You don't have that programmable gurney yet. And, nice, gosh. And then the later one, you know, one of the problems. I've got you know two volunteers for appointment tonight. Uh, once again, none of them live in my township, so mm -hmm. we're at a point where we've got, I think, five people who live here. So you know, middle of the night, you're relying on the same five people to do the mm -hmm. job, and. Um, Frankly, it's it's getting pretty tough. To do, so. so in this case, three people were at the hospital. Two people were at the hospital. Two, two on already not on paid call, to be, but right, being paid to be, yeah, working. be present. Uh, were at the hospital when the fire call hit. Mm -hmm. And then, so how many did show up? We had two additional people who showed up. And then folks from neighboring townships. Yep. Um, which is not, um, which is not uh, unheard of. I mean, that's pretty much standard procedure yeah. for, for any. Yeah. And everyone does the same thing. I mean, we go to Sierra Bowl all the time for fire calls they have, and you know, we had a first truck and tanker down in Zena, uh, Zena Township about a week and a half ago. Do you, do you do a, uh, an, a, I'm asking this question as a, as a newbie, uh, sort of deconstruction, what lessons to be learned, mm -hmm. oh, on yeah. a systematic basis each? Oh yeah, yeah, we, we do after action reviews, that's actually required by standards, but we do an after action review after every significant incident. Mm -hmm. um, look at things that could, you know, could have gone differently and that type of stuff. I mean, um, you know, for the, the actual fire, the second call, you know, the crews did, I mean, they had the, the crossway was pulled within two minutes of arrival on scene, which was well within national standard, and they had water in the fire within two and a half minutes, and the fire was immediately knocked down. You know, the biggest factor is, is the lack of people. You know, and that's not going to change until people in my township in Yale Springs decide well, that they want to take know, care of it. That ought to be publicized somehow. Yeah. I don't, we sent a card to every single residence in the township. <laughs> well, but, but, that's you have a real life example volunteer. to talk oh, yeah. about. Other thing is to say, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to do anything, and I'm also you, happy you, to sit here on wanna, 25 years of experience to know that it you wanna, makes that much difference. Do you want to pay for a full-time fire department? You know, that's that's the option that people are looking at. Well, at least the part-time uh, fire department, because at this point, we're you know, but we are the other the other first. thing is when you have. Insulation blown into your house. Mm -hmm. Make sure oh, the yeah. match doesn't burn it. Right. right. But but there there were two takeaways from this. One was that there wasn't an update to the fact that that, that Wellfields had municipal water. Right. So the second time around, there weren't any tankers right. coming. Right. And the second time, in. that was wonderful because yeah. the hydrant was basically right in their front yard. Yeah, so I was able to work. make that hook up with the police. And the other takeaway for the general populace is not, I mean, you, if you want, you can go in and check your insulation in your, your attic and see if it burns or not, but move it away from any electrical device. Right, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't right up next to that, that fan, mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't have started a fire. And that's the right. problem. It gets blown think, in and covers up. And I think people are really not guilty of this, I'm sure, myself at my own house, but. You know, your house is built, everything's good, and you don't worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't think, you know, insulation settles. Flame retardancy wears off after a while on certain things, you know. But you don't think about that because you're like, oh, I have my happy house. <laughs> um, and that's that's one of the issues that, you know, people were into. Um, overall, I mean, you know, it wasn't great, obviously, that the house rekindled and that there was damage on the home. But, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things we look at in this they still have the house. They still have a home that can be repaired and nobody mm -hmm. was hurt, which was fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, was, no loss of life. Yeah, that's no. always the you know the main priority for us. So. And our mutual aid system works very well, as it's supposed to. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're very lucky in Green County. 
that most of us work as closely together as we do. We work, we work very closely with the guys from Zia Township and from Cedarville, and we just hired a guy from Cedarville two weeks ago. So. <laughs> yes, that helps as well. And Houston is right the road, so I mean that's that's a very positive thing for all of us. So, so you have other things? You have volunteers? Yes, I've got two volunteers and a resolution that goes with them. Mm -hmm. I forgot to give you guys before. There's even one here for you, Wonder. And hopefully the number is right. 2018, 29. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, so these are two gentlemen, uh, young guys. So you know, young and strong, hopefully. They're both firefighters. Or well, one's in fire class, and one is a firefighter. Uh, Mikhail Stewart and Cortland Williams. Uh, and they both been interviewed very well. References were fantastic. Um, Backing up. Why do you suppose? They want to be volunteers in Yellow Springs. Uh, well, Just guess because they want to get experience. Yeah, do we and we pay for free training? Uh, one is already trained as a firefighter, yeah, and the other one is paying for his own training right now. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, that does attract people that most departments at this point, small departments, pay for well, training. And so they have a good reputation. Uh, yeah, we do have a good reputation. Both are recommended by their training program at Sinclair. They said, oh, you should check out this department. They, get, they do good work. So, um, do you make any cutoff for how far away people are before they can be a volunteer? We do. We had one guy who applied from Washington Courthouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one's a little, it just, it gets to the point you're like, <laughs> well, now keep in mind, obviously, at least for the public. These people are not responding to emergencies. Right. Oh, no, no, I, I realize that. Yeah, they have to be here on duty. They, yeah, they're, thank you. They're not coming in from Trotwood or something like yeah. sirens. No, I was just, just thinking about that. It's, right. I mean, but we do, they're willing to come. Yeah, then. I mean, there is a realistic. We had a guy from Columbus once who wanted to volunteer. And I was like, you know, that's great, but let's just see. There's got to be a department closer to <laughs> you that needs help, too. Yeah, that's. I mean, the guy from Washington. I think Washington Press or Chillicothe, one of those two, but there's a lot of departments down there that can use people. I mean, there's a lot of departments all over the state that can use people, so that's, <laughs> that's a problem. So we've got these two gentlemen and resolution 2018-29. Yeah, 2018-29. Is there a motion for adoption of resolution 2018-29? I so move. I'll second that. Crockett has seconded, so we will, oh wait a minute, is there any further discussion regarding this? <laughs> Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. <coughs> Barbie, anything else for the fire department? A couple things. Oh, um, okay. Fourth of July, oh, for or from? Either. Okay, well, from. Fourth um, of July, you know, we'll be out. I'd like to say for us, but it's not going to be in force. Uh, actually, up until yesterday, dinner time left. But if you were almost going to have to like, cancel the fireworks, because I didn't have enough guys to fulfill our statutory responsibility. Which is a far cry from days past when. Can a trustee was. help with your legal <laughs> responsibility? If you can uh, quickly become certified as a <laughs> firefighter. No. <laughs> that's it, sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's another thing that you should publicize. Oh, yeah, don't worry. That one, that one definitely is going to go up. That we squeaked by this year and what's going to happen Actually, next do, year. do publicize. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Don't, 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 yeah, that's, don't worry about that. Um, but we'll be there, so we're going to be there. Uh, probably smaller parade presents too. So the chow fest will be like one pack of hot dogs. It may just be a pack of dogs, and that's about it. Uh, <laughs> but oh no, no, Bob still brings up people. So. <laughs> if they were all certified as firefighters, we'd be great. Um, I'll be at the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association conference next weekend, um, conferring. Mm -hmm. I want a panel discussion about volunteer issues. Mm -hmm. Where is it being held? Uh, <laughs> Easton. Oh. They used to move it all over the state and then just figure it was easier. Mm -hmm. Right in the center of the state, like everyone else does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Easton's is cheaper to keep doing it. And, and Easton is, you know, you can bring your family or whatever and unleash them with your credit cards. So mm -hmm. Apparently that's what everyone does. So. Um, <coughs> we have, um, for years, we, being Miami Township, we have been a member, like everyone else in this area, of the Greater Miami Valley Emergency Medical Service Council. Um, Great Miami Valley Mass Council is a group of so it's all of us, plus the hospitals, um, who develop our regional standing orders for medical procedures, for pre-hospital procedures, um, and do a bunch of other things. 
the biggest one was provide us with the drug bags we have. Mm -hmm. You know, we pay them 300 bucks a year, I think, and then we get a drug bag, and the hospital exchanges the drugs for us, and mm -hmm. it's a nice system. Um, however, unfortunately, as council has changed over the years, and they've started to kind of take a bigger role in trying to run the operations of departments, uh, particularly in testing. Um, the council decided to, uh, two years ago, we moved from a paper-based regional test that you had to take every year to prove that you knew these orders um, to a computer-based system. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier to do your test and get your score right then and there. Um, I was on the committee that worked on the, the test, and the, the plan was that we wanted to have a, a system where, you know, if the guys all wanted to take their test on shift together, they could do it together mm -hmm. with the orders because the goal was that you know the orders. Mm -hmm. We don't want to keep people from running calls. We want you to know. You know, and realistically, in the back of the ambulance, if you forget something or forget how to do something, you can pull up your phone app, which has all the orders, or if worse comes worse, you call the hospital and talk to a doctor. Um, but this didn't re this was set up more like a certification exam with the National Registry. Um, and they've started becoming more and more punitive with departments. Uh, there have been a lot of complaints. Um, but we have, those complaints have not been listened to. So uh, after discussing the situation with our members and with Dr. Bailey and Dr. Dixon, our medical directors, um, we decided to, and I think we were the first of many, pull out of the drug bag exchange program. Which basically relieves us of that testing requirement in the manner that they want us to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we've purchased our own drug bags uh, that we will stock, and we're working closely with Kettering Health Network, um, who's agreed to uh, the same thing. So when we go to Green or Soin, which is 82% of the time, if we use a drug, they'll just exchange it for us one for one. Like, like the current system. Uh, if we go to a different hospital, we're going to work on a deal with Premier as well, but uh, hopefully that'll work. But if we go to Springfield Regional or something, we'll have some drugs stored here that we can come back and restock ourselves. Um, this allows us a couple things, but primarily it allows us to start one testing like we want to test, which is in groups like you would be in the back of an ambulance, more practical based testing, which is more realistic. Um, but also allow us to modify the standing orders that we utilize to respond to local needs. One of the problems that we have with a regional standing order is that I, everything's based on, I don't want to say the lowest common denominator, but in some ways it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always looking at, well, what does they do? Because they're the biggest department. Yeah. And no slam on date, but obviously they do things much differently than we would. Mm -hmm. uh, they see a lot of things that we don't see. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but everything's catered towards that kind of agency. So this gives us the, uh, it's actually kind of exciting, the ability to, to be more flexible and, you know, if there's something, a new emerging trend that we want to address, we can do it. And if there's something that we think is crazy we don't need to do, we don't need to do it. So to work on that, we're going to put together a, a committee that will oversee what we're doing. That will be chaired by Danny. Mm -hmm. It will include our medical directors, EMS coordinators from our two main hospitals. Yeah. Um, two members of the department, a pharmacist and a, uh, an educator, probably from Park State, uh, who can help develop our own orders and all that type of stuff and make sure that we're staying as reasonable and cutting edge yeah. as, as we want to be. This also allows us to eliminate some of the other procedures. There's a lot of stuff, you know, dating, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a metal mm -hmm. facility. Um, and that's a big concern for them. They deal with a lot of hydrofluoric acid. Yep. We don't. But we have to learn those orders and you know practice all that kind of stuff, which something we'll never do. So this gives us the ability to have more of a, I hate to use a Yellow Springs term, but local control <laughs> over what we're doing. Um, How long is it going to take? Uh, we actually we implement this on uh, on Friday. Oh, seriously? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shebang! Well, you know, we looked at like this long drawn out, you know. We'll do it in phase one, phase two, phase three. And then <laughs> I would discuss it <laughs> with, uh, we talked to some stakeholders, and you know, discussion with the members and with Dr. Bailey, Dr. Doctors Bailey and Dixon. Why drag it out? Let's just do it. They support what we're doing. Um, there are other departments that are very closely watching what we're doing. So maybe the trend center, I don't know. But that's not really our concern. Um, our concern is just to make things better for our patients and our people. So. And I'm pretty convinced 
that this is what it's going to be. At first, I thought this is crazy. This is a crazy thought. But uh, mm -hmm. actually, the more you know, the more I've looked at it and thought about it, it definitely is. Uh, it's the right direction for us. We'll maintain using the same same regional same orders so that we're all using the same thing. We'll just be able to make modifications, and Dr. Bailey and Dr. Dixon are, are very excited to do that and work with us and um, help us really get to a, a, a better level. So now I just need some new keys <laughs> yeah. to do that, but yeah. hopefully that too will happen. So. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, I need a brief executive session to discuss matters of personal discipline slash termination. Mm -hmm. That's our term. For the right reason. So, I don't. Uh, uh, Seven fifty-seven. Can we make that motion? I move that we go into an executive session for personal yeah. matters. I will second that. Okay. You will. You're on. Okay. We've now returned from executive session uh, with no action as a result. Moving along, um, anything further for fire department? Very done. We will move to the firehouse report. Um, anything, gentlemen, that you'd like to discuss before well, I, I, I get out of my soapbox? It's, it's eight o'clock. Time for the meeting to be over. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> okay. Well, I went in early. Then uh, yeah, let's let's play that one. <laughs> So let's move along to the firehouse report. As we all know, uh, we're at a certain certain kind of pause at the moment um, as a result of the uh, uh, bid openings or lack of bids to be opened uh, when we had them and the, uh, uh, the overage, as it were, from the projected cost of the firehouse. And that is, uh, that, that is being addressed right now as we speak. Has been since has been since we were doing the bids, and primarily this is as a result of uh, efforts from um, well, efforts from the architects MSA and from our uh, attorneys uh, both in Cincinnati and in Columbus. Uh, the long and the short of it is, at this point, there is nothing definite that that, that we have. If well, there is. I take that back. Where I kind kind of have. A couple of things to, to look at this evening, but uh, as you know, we're, we're one way or another, we're going to have to trim about a million two off this project. Uh, we're either going to contribute more, or we're going to we're going to we're going to cut out of it some way, shape, or form. Um, after numerous discussions with Dan Montgomery about what our potential uh, uh, avenues are, uh, there's a lot of there's not that many, I should say. There are small savings that can be made. Uh, not putting the light sconces on the building, uh, having down downlighting from other sources might save ten thousand um, dollars. Changing, you know, the, some of the fixtures of the eating fixtures in the bay might change a little bit of money. But this is this is small potatoes uh, all the way around, and. We really don't want to, if we don't have to, get into changing the footprint of the building because once you get in, started down that road, then you're talking about major re-engineering, major redesigning, uh, major time uh, usage, and uh, fortunately not really major cost for us because in our contract with MSA, it states that if their work does not produce bids that are within 10% of what they anticipated they were when we went out to bid, then it, it's their obligation to make whatever necessary changes to the plans and the bids and, and the permits and all the rest of that stuff that goes along with it. So that's good news in, you know, in one aspect for us anyway that we're not probably looking at re-engineering uh, costs with the architects. But we are looking at figuring out how to save some money on this. So the, the first part of the discussions from Dan <coughs> of how to save money uh, basically fall into two, two categories. One would be, I guess this is not the right perspective, one would be 
Um, yeah, I guess probably do nothing like that. One would be to reduce the amount of uh, apparatus bays from five to four. Have the fifth one be expandable, as we kind of do now, for what would potentially have been a sixth one. Uh, and these are roughly half a million dollar savings. I mean, very roughly. The, the, I've got two. He's given me two kind of options, roughly half a million dollars each. The bay reduction is one. And then the second one is the cladding of the building. That's 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 all this kind of looks like wood, but it's actually a cement product that's 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 put against uh, um, aluminum aluminum channels that the, the, the channel the rain down through them. Uh, if we were to replace all of this with traditional asbestos siding, lap siding, that then gets painted. Uh, that could save upwards of, of, of a half a million also. Uh, and he was very adamant. Instead of asbestos, goodness, he wouldn't consider it. Well, the metal. It's, it's the old, it's the old cement board stuff, you know, the traditional. I understand. Yeah. That. Um, anyway, he was very insistent that that would be his least recommended because he thinks that would so substantially changed the look of the building to the public from what we have you know, put out uh, as a project. He just didn't like that idea. But metal siding is another issue. Another, I mean, the asbestos still has a metal back, right? Or I, not? I don't know. I don't know. No. This was, these are very rough. Yeah. I, I haven't been involved in this, but I will say that I was doing some research on my own and at least on the residential level, and it may be different for commercial, the material that has replaced asbestos siding, the cement board siding, is actually has wood fibers in it and it doesn't last like the old asbestos siding. It has to be painted. It yeah. will absorb water and it will rot. Yeah. So it's not a that particular, if it's that product, it's not a good alternative. If it's a true cement fiber, non-organic material fiber reinforced, which is still made, but it's much more expensive, <coughs> then it would be a durable siding. Yeah. But you know, it's just like you wouldn't want to build your, your fire station with vinyl siding. Well, you wouldn't want to build it with Hardy Board is the most yeah. common brand name siding. Okay, so we're looking at, we're looking at a million two. These two options, after we get past these two options, then you're getting into changing the footprints. You know, reducing the amount of sleeping rooms, making the meeting rooms smaller, but, taking the conference rooms out. But, but, but you just said we're taking out a, a bay. Mm -hmm. Isn't that reducing the footprint? He, he's pretty sure that it may have, it may, he probably, that it has to go to Al Kuzma. But other review areas because it is place. changing the, the footprint, but it's not changing like the dynamics of the building. And the, it's just the it's shifting one. It's yeah. squeezing in one end. Okay. Well, I'm not sure, sure what I'm. Okay, that's a discussion. You know, with the okay. architects at some point. This is what what I'm saying is our potential look at just to save to save money. So we got a million two. We got to start with. These are potentially a half million off of that. Um, both of them, or each? Each. Okay, so that's a million. No, we would not change both. You couldn't take off a bay and change this cladding. You could, but we don't want to do that. Why not? <sighs> okay, we could do that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do that I, yeah. anyway. So then, the other things to do are, and we're going to do this one way or the other, just because it's going to take this much time to, to make these value engineering changes and redo the bids and all the rest of this stuff, but rebid this approximately mid-October for a December uh, bid opening. Uh, put it out there longer, put it out there wider. Um, you know, make sure everybody, every set of eyeballs that can see this. Uh, and then, um, you know, 
potentially awarded somewhere around uh, December. So anyway, and that projected might save about three hundred thousand dollars because then you're out of the peak season. Uh, so you're now at eight hundred and you're still four hundred short. Uh, the other option four hundred thousand. Yeah. Other option is for us, and Ashley had mentioned this, for us as a township administration, as the general fund of the township, uh, borrow uh, about $350,000 over 30 years at, um, at about three, three and a quarter percent uh, to make that contribution towards the, the savings. Now, as he mentioned in the bid package, if we decide to do that, and it's not locked in stone. We can always just just say no, forget it. But he's got to get this started in his budget, federal go federal government budget for 2019, 20 or whatever it is. But this fall, before what did he say, August? 2018. Yeah, he said he was something by August. August. Yes. We've got to have something. I mean, the end of the budget is. October 1st, yeah. but he said we need, need, 45, need days. 45 days before that. Yeah, to get started. Plus, and to do that, you have to have a general obligation bond. Good old bond man is back. And for us to have a general obligation bond, we don't just write that ourselves and send it down to Ashley. Our bond lawyer, Brad Rui, would have to come back and, and do that. And Brad has, I've had few discussions with Brad about that. And he has provided us with a resolution authorizing him to, his company, to start work on this general obligation bond, which I really don't know exactly how much work's involved in it, but I do know it would cost about $2,500 to, to produce this general obligation bond. You get the bond, and then you tell Ashley, we've got this general obligation bond, and then he, he would then send us an application very similar, apparently, Margaret, to our friendly application for the original um, uh, for the original loan, the big loan. But he says that a lot of the information that went into the big loan is the same as what they need for what would be this smaller loan. So it wouldn't be as big a project and making this application. Remind me, and then the smaller loan would be paying for. The shortfall in, in the, the budget that Chris just laid out. The building. The 400000 So it would just be there for some of the bigger amount. Yeah. The, what would be the, the majority of the shortfall? Now, we could go down Richard's Road where you, you, you cut a bay and you go to, to the left siding, and then we wouldn't have to borrow the money, in theory. Listen, I don't like this option at all, but I probably don't like this option less than I like the option of losing the siding, the cladding on the building. That's let, let me ask something else. How much have to more wood to decide this? Uh, we need to move on this general obligation so that I can, if we want to, again, so that I can start with Ashley and find out what additional information he needs for us to go down the road. And we, we have, we have up until the point where they sent they sign us a, they sent us a check to just say okay no thanks you know we don't want it uh, but you paid the twenty five hundred dollars yeah we're on the twenty five hundred dollars but you know how much and we don't pay out and we don't pay any interest on this because there's no there's no points or any of that sort yeah. of thing like you know, well, how we much will on this the, we actually will the loan payment let's just call it that be each year for thirty years eighteen thousand two hundred twenty three dollars is that Easy to absorb into the budget. No, it's not easy to absorb. Into. So I mean, you, you can't do that until you've figured out how you're going to. No, we can't. Pay yourselves. We can pay it. Do we easily want to pay it? Well, or easily? No. I mean, what is it that we're cutting out that we're now spending the eighteen thousand on? We're not cutting out anything, but we generally will. We can we can create a carryover of approximately thirty thousand a year with the budget that we're with the budget that we have right this minute with the revenue that we have. For 2018 and the, and the expenditures we have for 2018, mm -hmm. uh, there's approximately a $30,000 uh, carryover in there. 
okay, so we can, as long as the, the costs stay the same for the next 30 years, yes, we, we can do it. The conversation really centers around the word easily. Okay. Um, easily means one thing to you, and it means another thing to Chris, because what we're trying to do is, with the carryover, is cover problem expenses, whether it's a, a building repair or whether it's unforeseen a repair. Yeah. rainy day. Yeah, or something. We also use it to pay our salary, our pay, and function for the first quarter until we get our, mm -hmm. you know, our first settlement payment. Good point. Now, 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 do keep in mind that this is not inclusive of the discussion where this building is sold $350,000, we then have $350,000 additional in our general fund, in our rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Do we know what we're asking for this building? $350,000. <laughs> <laughs> so that could pay off that. that we're we're not going to ask. It'll be auctioned off. It'll be no. nice to, because you, you, can't, you can't sell it to somebody for a set price because the government will right. So anyway. So, um, I, I don't like it, but I think we need to go down the direction of this step to get this general obligation bond started. So it gives us the flexibility when, you know, when we start to get some hard numbers as to what we might, you know, might be looking at to, uh, to have to get these things in line. Um, your thoughts, gentlemen? Um, when are you thinking about optioning the bill? Um, it's I, tomorrow, is that you got the <laughs> It's after we move out. It doesn't have to be after we move out. I think we could do it, you know, and, and sell it based on, you know, you can't have it until we're, until we, yeah, we're out of it. Um, yeah. I don't know what the, the appropriate time frame for that would be. But, but that, 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 that would pay off the loan, so to speak, right? If you got the three hundred fifty, if you got three hundred fifty thousand, yes, but I I would not at this point recommend using that money just to pay off the loan no. because then we would be down to very thin rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. No, I understand, but it but it it kind of you know washes out. It's just yeah, it would have been nice to have that as extra money, but yeah. now it's it's yes. How you, your cash flow is one thing, but your overall balance sheet is another. The, the, one balance last thing, is balance sheet. the one last thing before I either ask for further discussion or, or motion on this is I am thoroughly convinced that the next, next administration of the state of Ohio, regardless of whoever it is, will make uh, adjustments in the local government tax distribution yes. uh, in the state yeah, to the benefit of Because that, that was something else I was going to bring up. It's, but when a few years yes. ago, we got cut by the state right. funding. We didn't. We didn't just say, "Oh, we can absorb that." <laughs> we were but both really just saying. Both candidates are on records committing to to yeah. uh, revising backward, back upward. <laughs> <laughs> and so legislature goes along. One of them was here Friday it, yeah. night. The the worst, you know, the worst time for us for this is the first few years because it's just like everything, you know. You, you're, you're buying in. You're, you're you're buying this product, this building, with 2018 dollars, and 10 years from now, those 2018 dollars are worth a lot more than the 2025 dollars or whatever. Uh, but uh, so, can I try to recap this? See sure. if I really understand. And I'm not sure I do. Uh, there's the option of reducing a bay in the building. Correct. Which doesn't really mean reducing the square footage. Or it, 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 yes, it does. Uh, and then there's the changing the exterior cladding. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also the issue of uh, getting money now for the building that we're in. 
There was one more component in there. No, uh, I skipped one. Uh, they're waiting until later this fall to be able later, later to, to save them. And potential there. So what? What makes sense to vote on tonight? The issuing of the general obligation bond for the sale of. No, we're going to have the option of being able to float a bond if you decide you need to. Uh, unless we decide to, this is not connected to the sale of the building. The sale of the building simply so replenishes. It's a you know. So the general, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start all over. <coughs> Start all over. <laughs> The general obligation bond uh, uh, allows us to make application to USDA for a 30-year 3.25% loan with an $18,000 principal payment per year for the 30 years. Based on the potential sale of this house. Of this no, 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 it has no relationship. It's, it's to make up for the, the shortfall that um, one of those other two options we consider. And the amount there will would still be... be $350,000. It may be okay. confused because you've heard that number twice. One's attached to okay. the sale of this building okay. and the other one is the, cup, the cost of the bond. Mm -hmm. But moving on tonight only means that you start the process so that you have that option down the road when, when, you know, when it comes time to issue that bond, that $350,000, maybe we, you, you, you guys will decide you don't want. But you can't, you've got, due to the time frame of everything, yeah. you've got to get the ball rolling now at least have the option. You have to invest two thousand five hundred dollars in order to have that option. Yeah. If we decided to to wait until October or November and to see whether you know which decision we wanted to make about the building and how much it actually was going to do and blah blah blah, then and then we decided we actually needed the money. Give Ashley a call. Ashley says, eh, "Sorry, budget's already been set. You're going to have to wait till next year." Yeah. Which means we would not be able to bid this until mm -hmm. the next year. Okay. If someone makes this motion, I'll support it. Okay. Um, I would make this motion uh, that we... Uh, well, there's actually a resolution. Resolution. It's a real live resolution. It's eight pages long, so... <laughs> read the whole thing. To borrow. To what, to number, borrow. what number would it be, Mark? 30. 30. Okay, so it would be resolution 2018-30. Uh-huh. Resolution 2018-30. Um, do I simply make that motion? You certainly may. Okay. I would make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Motion is second. Is there any further discussion? The only, my only statement is that, uh, that the 2500 is what we would have to spend anyway to have our attorney draw this uh, type of agreement. And we can't do this agreement without an attorney drawing it up. Right. This type of this type of agreement it has to be done by a bond attorney. Right. I mean, a, a general lawyer. Yeah. Just okay. be, you know, be capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? Sure. No, maybe both, please. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. And I'll say it again, I don't like the idea, but or, that took a long time for me to understand it. Or, okay, that's all I have for new firehouse. Shall we move on? The only, um, the only observation that I would like to make was in the conversation about the siding mm -hmm. changes. You sort of lost me in terms of durability and well, I can't speak to that because I'm, I'm not the architect. Um, I don't know exactly what product he was referring to, mm -hmm. but he was just using that as an example yeah. of the expense of the change. cementist product versus a, a lower price thing. But we will get the answers to those questions long before we have to make the decision as to which which which. Yeah, because it does occur to me maybe there's something in between the two. <laughs> Well, there may be something in between the two, but perhaps it does not save us the money that Well, we it wouldn't save as much, but there may so, be something as durable as 
the system that they, mm -hmm. I mean, it is interesting that there's a half a million mm -hmm. difference in, in possible cladding. Uh, yeah. That, well, I'd have to go back to the estimates, but I don't remember exactly how much that stuff was. Mm -hmm. close. So anyway, shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cemetery? Well, oh, before we get to the cemetery, I just wanted to say that the, the Clifton Cemetery looks looks great. Looks it's terrible. all it's all mowed. Huh? Looks terrible. Okay. Looks terrible. <laughs> Don't rain on my parade here. It looked pretty good. The Clifton Cemetery looks looks nice. It's all mowed and so it's all weed eaten. Catholic Cemetery has just been mowed and it's all weed eaten. And the Glenfor Cemetery is been mowed but not weed. Shaggy um, <laughs> and not weed eaten. It was supposed to be weed eaten today. So they told me we mowed last week. We're going weed eaten Monday. And Tuesday, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> anyway, at the last minute. Well, you know, when it rains change, this much, you want to do it at the last minute, it'll all yeah. be right back up again. Well, you don't get a whole lot last minute or then Tuesday, yeah. July the 3rd. True. That's pretty the last one there. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are really good in eclipses. Duh. I know, but it looks nice. Yeah. It looks yeah. nice. Well, thank you. Yes. You do a good job. All right. Okay, we've had two burials, one natural and one ashes at Blue Forest since our last meeting. Mm -hmm. That's all we've had. Uh, we've covered Clifton already. Um, your man was supposed to take care of the spraying. Mm -hmm. Assuming he did. He did, I saw him. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, so I'm going to call him. He said he was going to. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I don't have any estimates on the approach yet. Did you tell him to Glen Forest too? The the grassy? The, the roads in the, yeah. yeah. The yes, I Are you talking yeah. about spraying? Right. right. So if you did, I hope you did. Okay. But I didn't see you down, but I saw the other two. I wanted the whole gravel shebang yeah. to take care of. Okay. Uh, I'm going to work on your scattering here. I will get that. Yeah, you will get it. I will get it. I will get it. Yeah. yeah. Get it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's about it. I've got an ashes on the 14th in Clifton, Penny, but it's going to happen. Okay. Cool. And we should be done tomorrow. Everything wrapped up with the cemetery. Mm -hmm. so. Now, a natural burial site costs fifteen hundred. And an unnatural burial costs yeah, a lot more. Standard. <laughs> Six hundred. Six hundred. Which face? But see, with mm -hmm. a standard, then you had to have a good cobble and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Those aren't cheap. Right, they're involving and all that stuff. You don't have to be involved. Nope. It has to be involved. Right, right. Which would require a little yeah. traditional. But, uh, but I don't think there's very many to choose for that. I'd rather. I'm, there we, get, we, we get some that are involved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Dan? <laughs> I have a question about what you have in your hand. Well, I can. He's got to tell perhaps you. About I'll, it. Perhaps I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Uh, as you all may remember, a, a few months ago, quite a few months ago, I think we were offered the uh, option of having these all sandblasted and, and refinished uh, at a very minimal cost. Those are uh, veteran plaques. They're flag over. They're markers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the local historical society has offered to volunteer to uh, help the procedure that we have to develop of, of, of removing them and well, making sure they get back and making sure they get back where they're <coughs> to, and then getting them down to, to, to the foundry at Xenia and and then going over in addition to the ones that physically exist we also have computer records of all the veterans in, in, the, in, the, in the cemetery and so we're going to have those locations checked to see whether they have markers and if they don't what it might take for the foundry, they have the original molds for these because they made well, these. Make some more. Yeah, make some they make some more. Obviously, they got it's got to be enough a quantity to make it worthwhile at a price that we can afford. The historical society may throw in some funds to to cover those costs. That hasn't been ter determined yet. Also, potential of a Boy Scout project. Um, you know, for them to get involved. It's just we haven't gone out and physically. You know, decided the amount of time and effort 
to twist to get that, that so I can see it. Uh, there are set screws in the back that, that go onto a rod. The rod goes down into a base plate coffee can that's filled with cement in the ground. And most of these rods are bent this way, this way, this way. <laughs> these set screws from my, uh, a few times I went up to take them out, you, you go ahead and screw, you go ahead to turn them and half of them will break and the other half will unscrew. Strip out. And I would imagine he's going to be able to. He could to probably heat, use heat possibly. Yeah, I'm not giving Boy Scouts an assembly. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> tank. Oh, you, know. you can use a propane tank. You can use a small tank. Oh, you get them off the, off just the to rod? Heat, just to heat the, yeah, not the bolt, the well, area around. The other oh. thing is, 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 is having somebody that's used to doing that. I've learned a lot about taking out bad bolts. And you don't just crank on it. Right. Yeah, but the, the business that they're in, I'm sure they would easily be able to drill and tap those. Yeah, they could always do that. With a minimal amount of effort. Yeah, so anyway, I, I just wanted to let you know that yeah. that's back in kind of bubbled up to the surface and we may end up uh, being able to fill, fulfill that project uh, uh, this summer. So that's strictly for Glen Forest? Is there yeah, a possibility of Clifton maybe getting on the bandwagon sometime? Maybe, maybe. We'll just see how that goes. Because we've got yeah. several, you know, we got a bunch of for me. Yeah. We'll see what this pans out. Maybe we yeah. don't know there. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else cemetery wise? How about roads? Bridges. Let's see. I got my wedging done finally. Everything's done. You did a nice job. Did a really nice job. I looked at them all this weekend. Uh, you put down a lot more blacktop than I thought. You know than I thought when you said. You know. Well, about these private park, I definitely did. That was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did a more than anticipated. But I had a local resident this weekend to tell me how wonderful that was to be able to we had one ride your bicycle down there and on. not fall, fall over. We had one stop and, and complain that we were doing that and not fixing the corner down on the hill. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't play one thing one. easier. So yeah. we can do. But everything's done and it's going to make, make a big difference. The pool needed. I needed to there was something. a lot of that. I needed to do something. I had a lot of low spots holding water. And it was, yeah. So yeah. It'll, it'll make a difference. Uh, tractor Where sticks. Where are you? All right. My tractor's running. So uh, next week I'm hoping to start my rounds again. Round two. Mm -hmm. no? Not that soon. Not the uh, scattering garden. That's done. this week. But, oh, that's this next week. week. Oh. This week. Scattering garden will be done. And then I can uh, start round two. Uh, Sniff Houston, Grail Circle, Larkins, Kyle. Not Kyle. North River and. Uh, Brian Parker, all going to need to be trimmed as well. Yes, everything needs trimmed. It's on the list. But it's a big round. Yeah. Oh, it's too high. No, it's too high. Okay. I just I'll give it something to you. Mark them down as I went along. And I got an opening somewhere. We uh, should. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Um, Hammond's little spot there, I'll get to that soon. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to clean around the shop a little bit. So Do what? Clean around the shop. Oh. Touch it oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. It, it has some weeds yeah. too. Uh, somebody ran off the edge of the road and broke down the edge of the road a little bit. It needs to be burned or some gravel and dirt or something else. I'll fix it. Okay. That's about all I really had. Right. Anything else for road stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Roads and bridges? Nope. Moving to fiscal officers. I have a resolution. 2018-28 amendment of permanent appropriations whereas an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township now therefore the trustees authorizing amendments to the following permanent appropriations that would be in the fire fund um 2191 i increased office supplies by 800 dollars and um toner and so forth for the, that printing machine is so expensive anyway that's what that was and an ems billing I increased operating supplies by $30,000. Explanation, which is, um, we did receive a um, grant from the uh, state for the power cot, which was $26,800.50, I think. And, um, and then there's purchase orders in there, um, laying on the table, that, um, uh, and it costs, what is it, 30, Two thousand, something like that, to get. I don't have the exact number, but to get that power pot, 
you know, to buy it and have it installed and so forth. I mean, so uh, to ease the pain here of what for this thirty thousand, I'm telling you, we did receive uh, the twenty six thousand. So anyway, I increased by that much to so I could cut that purchase orders. So that you you're that really only up. increasing by four thousand. So you've got twenty six. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's how I was. That's how you want to look at it. If you want to be happy. Um, anyway, <laughs> we know, we so. Know. For the rest of your life. So anyway, that's that's why that big fat pile of money is like that. I move the adoption of this resolution. I second that. Moved and second. Any further discussion regarding resolution 20, 2018 28? Yeah. Are you on me, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, at the next meeting, we will have a public hearing for the 2019 tax budget. It's due in their office on the, or it's on the 18th. We're going to have the next meeting, whatever that is. Yeah, the 16th, sorry. And then it's due in the uh, auditor's office on the 20th. So between now and then, I will certainly give you a tax budget to look at. I have to. And um, <laughs> but the, that'd be nice. But the, yes, but the uh, the public hearing is advertising this. It'll be this Thursday's Yellow Springs News. So that's generally what happens for the UV. Um, how it goes this time of year. Usually, and, it happens a little earlier. <laughs> um, regardless, it's yeah. happening in a timely enough fashion that we will get it done. Um, not that much earlier. Anyway, mm -hmm. it would have been tonight. But regardless. Um, uh, the audit, the 2016-17 audit has been completed, and uh, the guesstimate cost of the total audit was around $2,300, and the um, yeah, the payment to the state auditor's office for $700 and the change was as, as part of the audit cost. That's all I have. Anything else for the fiscal officer? Oh, only that I just want to repeat what you just said. We pay to be audited. It's too bad you weren't here when we had the $14,752 audit. Mm -hmm. I just want to repeat. <laughs> this is the, the $23 state audit. auditor, supported by taxes, bills <clears throat> us, also supported by taxes, to be audited. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not, I'm, that's. Just a statement well, of fact. I'm not yeah. making well, any not motions either. or whatever. Well, you I know, if you were a, a a business, you would you might see it be prudent to be audited every year. Many businesses are, and they hire someone to do it. Yes. But they don't. It's their choice, except that there are many requirements, to, you know, for doing things to have an audit. So, the the issue you're saying is that. The state auditor's office has kind of got a, an unusual well, system that they're supported by, this, by the public and charged. One way or another, we're paying. We would be paying for it anyway. Right. I just think it ought to be under the state auditor's budget line totally. But be that as it may. Okay. Well, for the next 30 years, we're going to have to do full audits, and they're going to be six to $8,000. So. And that's something to be. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I've brought this up with each candidate for governor. Uh, this is something that has okay. changed over okay. the okay. years. Come on. Gentlemen and lady, we will move and on. And the rest to, of us. To the, and the rest of you. Uh, <laughs> we'll move on to the zoning inspector. Okay. Um, I just issued the. Uh, a permit for the second house on the individual lots that were created, building lots on the Arnavitz farm. So the, both those lots on Houston Road are now mm -hmm. going to have houses. Um, the other important piece of information is the Zoning Commission is planning to have a public hearing at their next regularly scheduled meeting to um, I don't know what, what's the right word, but I'll, I'll use eliminate tonight the three chapters of the zoning code, the two chapters on multifamily housing, for which we have no zones, 
and I've never had, even had a desire for you know someone to request rezoning. And it's contradictory to our comprehensive plan to have that kind of density of housing in the township. And the third one will be to, to repeal the, the PUD chapter, essentially for the same reason. It's for large, you know, large scale high density development, which is not what the comprehensive plan says. I'm sorry, well, you better check with they better check with Ken LeBlanc before he we, goes away. We, we check with Ken LeBlanc A about but just he, doing it, he and B, that, he they didn't know do we their had, review. He didn't know we had a PUD in the township. He was not informed that we had what, one. What, I just talked to him and gave him all this information. You told him Golden Willow was, a, was an established We have PUD. one. Uh, he said you can't re repeal it. And Well, he didn't ask me if we had any. He asked me if we had any. I okay, said, well, yes. I don't know why he's talking with you about it, but I went through the process. Every time the, the Zoning Commission makes a recommendation, regional planning has to review it and give their two cents on it. And I said, you know, we want to, they're talking about repealing these three chapters. And, he, and, we, had, and we had talked to him before that about, is there any problem just repealing a whole chapter? He said no. He did not say if you have, you know, it's clear to me. For example, the the zoning commission was thinking about re changing a zone for which we have land zoned. Well, obviously, you can't just pull that zone away. That would require rezoning all the property that was under that zone. But the a PUD once a PUD is is created, it is its own zone. It doesn't refer back to the code in any way, shape, or form. In other words, okay, there's well, nothing in the code that tells you how to, okay, how to well, operate willow fields. It, it's, a, it's a moot point in my opinion. I think a PUD is an important part of a, uh, of a zoning tool that a township has, and I will not support the elimination of okay. a PUD. Do you understand, I understand our, what our PUD allows? Yes, I wrote it. Okay, so it allows exactly the same density as we have now. That's correct. All right. So the only option that it gives, unless we're unless we're doing a commercial one, is is how you arrange the houses. That's exactly what it's intended for. Right. And that's why it exists, and that's why I I continue my support for its existence. Okay. That well, is, it allows. I'm asking for one part of a piece of land zone. to be clustered, yes. and then. Another part of the same parcel would be open space. Right. right. That's why Golden Willow has four acres of houses and 16 acres of open space, or whatever it actually works. Mm -hmm. 33 acres of open space, or whatever it is. I think it's more than four acres of houses, but anyway. So, okay, what else you got? That's I'm it. sorry, what were the three um, chapters? I have the multifamily housing, okay, the it's, PUD, it's and our let me see, R1, R2, R1A, R1B, R2 and R3. R1A. R2, no, no, R2 and R3. I'm just thinking through the numbers, how we do it. R, the chapters R2, R3, and PUD. R2, R3, and PUD. Okay, thank you. Have you had any discussion with uh, Karen Steve Reed? From Stony Creek Garden? Stony no, Garden. I have not had huh. any conversation that's, with her at all. That's, that's so weird. Because a, a week or so ago, they've, we've been going back and forth. <coughs> uh, they have uh, in, in, intentions of um, putting an issue on the ballot in November to serve alcohol at their property, um, the, the Stony Creek Gardens. Their mm -hmm. leased property. Their leased property. Yeah they, yeah, they don't own the property. And so they're hoping to have. Uh, Events and fundraisers and alike, and and serve food and drink uh, for the purpose. For well, are the, what is the business now? Well, it's the same. It's the same business. It's the same garden nursery. This but is they're going to do fundraisers. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit. Diff I mean, that's all right. They're there because they qualify under as ag as an agricultural business. Right. Fundraising is an agriculture. Okay, I, I suggested that they 
contact right. you for okay, your opinion for compatibility of zoning. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's all. That getting a liquor permit is totally separate from, no, from I, that I, issue. Yeah, I understand. And, and I have got an opinion from Prosecutor DeWine as to whether we had any involvement. They asked us if we had any requirements about this, this ballot issue for them. Mm -hmm. and, We've never done it, so I wasn't sure. So I asked her for an opinion on that, and she said, "No, a township does not have any input or requirements on on uh, liquor licenses." Yeah, and I said, "Well, serving alcohol. I mean, can they be that close to the cemetery? You know, thinking of schools and playgrounds. I mean, obviously, there's no nobody over there playing. Yeah. but you know, I didn't. I didn't know. She said, "No, that no there's none of those. Yeah, that yeah. we think about in town when they right. when they come so, up." Well, so one thing to get a liquor license is another thing to operate a business that it's fits, not going to sell liquor that, right. that fits the zoning description. Right. The, those two things were separate from the, the, the zoning question, and that's why I'm saying I uh, recommended that they contact Richard about okay. compatibility to an agricultural service. So it sounds so, like maybe I should reach out to them since they have it. Contacted me. They, they have, they're very serious about this, and they said they wanted a response from us, which I've already given them uh, by July 3rd, only on the questions of the of the ballot, not about the zoning. I just they sent them. an email that has a whole lot of information. Your, your, your response was to talk to Richard. Correct. So we, the township has not made a response. That was the response. Yeah. The response was talking about zoning. That was the email has a whole bunch of information. But what, the they've, what they've done and gone through and all this research they've done. You, you're <laughs> going to want to read. Well, so somebody forward that to me? Yeah, but, well, it's, it's printed out. I, I don't know if it's on. Is it in your, is it right there? In my, yeah. uh, in, uh, you. I don't, I don't know what the deal is here, but they could get a liquor license and not be allowed to sell liquor. Of course. Because of the zoning. Right, but I don't know what the, I mean. I but don't they know. Obviously they obviously think. I just don't know that they're walking down an appropriate road. No, like I said, you can read that. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. So Anything else, Richard, under zoning? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Any new business this evening? No. Uh, no business. We haven't already covered. Uh, yes. Okay. Old business. And, uh, Mark, this overlaps with your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I did attend uh, the Michael Schumann report, mm -hmm. right. uh, although there was no, no direct discussion of the designated CIC, mm -hmm. uh, just that I attended uh, the report that Schumann made of a couple day uh, interview process he had with stakeholders around local economic development um, and he, he's on contract with the credit union and he has more work, work he's going to be doing. Uh, and one of the features is uh, feasibility of, desirability of a designated community improvement corporation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think for this meeting any details was important, but the uh, notes of his report are available online. Thank you. Any other old business? Hearing that, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. I second. Move to second. We are adjourned.